Duolingo is known as like the most popular, best way to learn a language. It's free, it's fun, it covers so many different languages. It's great, right? It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> Let's talk about why it's a trap and what you can do to avoid it. And of course, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell to be notified when I post a new video about no BS, real life language learning. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie. I'm a language coach and I am great at helping stuck language learners get past their obstacles and learn language on, ter on their own terms in a realistic way. Duolingo is great and it's fun and it's free and it really gives you a sense of accomplishment really, really easily, which is great for a lot of things. However, it is not great for like a realistic approach to lingual learning. So for example, one of the things that Duolingo does to keep things really easy and really satisfying is that a lot of it is based on multiple choice and things like that, where you have you know, answers presented to you and you have to click the ones that go into the right order and, you know, avoid the wrong words. And, you know, they'll have two different words that start with the same letter. And if you're not careful, you're going to pick the wrong word and stick it in there, you're going to get it wrong, which is, it's, it's, it's kind of a little petty, to be honest. First of all, you know, try and trip you up in those ways to make sure that you're paying attention. It's not the most realistic approach to language learning. And on top of that, using a new language is not about multiple choice things. You know, when you're having a conversation with somebody, you're not presented like a Sims character or something. You're not presented with options to select to respond with. You have to come up with these concepts yourself. You have to come up with these words and these sentences yourself. It's about active learning, not, you know, basically the way that Duolingo trains you to communicate in a language. So while, you know, testing yourself and learning language through this multiple choice kind of way um, is really easy to learn things and really fun and it keeps the keeps the level of entry really, really low and really easy to accomplish. In real life, that's not that's not how you learn a language. You'll find that, you know, you spend so much time doing this multiple choice kind of stuff where the answers are available for you to pick and choose which ones, that when it comes to an actual conversation, you can't come up with your words yourself. You can't come up with what to say and how to express yourself because you're so used to having these words presented to you already. You just gotta pick the right ones. If you get sucked into the Duolingo trap, you can absolutely get stuck in that really, really frustrating place where you spend a lot of time learning new vocabulary and learning how to build sentences correctly just to not be able to use any of that information when it comes to an actual real life conversation or a real life scenario in which you wanna learn the language that you've been learning. Now, let's talk about the Duolingo streak. We get really hung up on streaks and that is not a great metric for judging your language learning. First of all, you know, if you've used Duolingo for more than like a couple of days and you have been, you know, really focused on keeping your streak going, you know that, you know, on your off days, you'll probably keep your streak going by just going through the first lesson, something that you already know, something that you can easily answer and get that XP so that you can keep your streak going and then you're happy. And then you get so focused on making sure that you just get the bare minimum of that XP, bare minimum, just to keep the streak going. Which means that you shifted your focus from learning the language in a way that's usable and relevant to you and helpful to you to just, you know, I have to make sure that I have to keep the streak going because without this streak, I have nothing. Basically, people put a lot of weight into their Duolingo streaks without thinking about what it actually means to them and what it actually means for their language learning. It can be a great motivational tactic, sure. Yes, I'm not saying that it's not. We get hung up on it a lot, especially when language learners don't really know how else to judge their progress. They get sucked into this trap of, if I lose my streak, if I lose my 500 day streak, then everything that I've done so far is just out the window and there's no other way for me to judge my progress. There's no other way for me to be aware of how I've progressed and you know the work that I've put into my language learning. So I have to keep the streak up because that's the only measure that I have. It's the only thing that makes me feel good about my language learning, right? If you're not familiar with the sunk cost idea. I don't know if it's a theory or if it's just a concept, but the idea is that, you know, you're so afraid of losing all the effort you've put towards something 
that you do something just to avoid losing the progress that you've made. The farther you go, the bigger your streak is, the more likely you are to keep the streak going, even if you hate doing it, even if it's like not serving you well, even if it's just stressing you out, even if it's just an obligation. When you get sucked into the trap of learning just to keep that streak going, you're stuck. You know, we, we want to learn for the purpose of learning, right? For the purpose of actually making real rel relevant progress to our goals and feel our language skills developing, not just to, you know, make sure that number in the app stays there. Similarly, another thing that Duolingo does that um, is helpful in some ways, but if you're not careful, it'll trap you, is that Duolingo values perfection. And it does this in a couple of different ways. One of the ways it does this is, you know, if you go through the Duolingo lessons and you go through, I believe it's two lessons perfectly, it'll give you the option to skip past the rest of the lessons and go to the next level, which is great if, you know, it's something that it's an easy concept and you, you don't have to do much to like, you know, refresh your memory or learn about it because it's similar to another language that you know or something like that. But if you get sucked into the Duolingo trap, you end up working so hard to do the languages perfectly. So you get that rush of dopamine, you know, you get that little reward there that yes, you did it perfectly and that means you succeeded. That is small. That's like, that's something that can be like more easily avoided. The thing that's harder to avoid, that's like the same idea of Duolingo valuing perfection is the heart system. The more mistakes that you make, you lose hearts. And I think you gotta get like five hearts. And once you lose all your hearts, you have to wait. You either have to be a paid member of Duolingo or you have to wait until you can study more because you made too many mistakes which is a great way to stay focused and stay excited and get that adrenaline going for your lingual learning. The approach of valuing perfection is not what we want in language learning. Mistakes are good in language learning. Mistakes are how we learn. If we don't make mistakes, then we don't learn. You know, the, this, this idea that, you know, we have to punish ourselves if we make mistakes. That is so unhealthy. Even in life in general, we get really caught up in being perfect and not making mistakes and not feeling embarrassed and not feeling inferior and all these things. And Duolingo really pushes that forward. It really thrives off that, which is not a healthy approach to language learning. We really need to be accepting and motivated to make mistakes. Making mistakes is better than not doing anything and not learning at all. If you get sucked into making sure that you're not losing your hearts, making sure that you're going through the lessons as quickly as possible and gilding those lessons, and that requires perfection, um, you're stuck in the Duolingo trap. Another thing that Duolingo does is gives you a false sense of accomplishment. Now this is similar to the um, multiple choice questions, but as you go through a Duolingo tree and you know, you guild your lessons. So you do the lessons like four or five times, whatever it is to get a gilded lesson. And that basically sends a message to you like, hey, you conquered this lesson, you know it perfectly. Um, which is great, except it's incorrect because you can go through the lesson a bunch of times and then you can gild it and then you can never see it again. But what you don't realize is what can happen and does happen a lot of times is that that information, that knowledge ne never went from short-term memory to long-term memory. So a couple of weeks later, you'll have for completely forgotten that concept. You'll have forgotten what you did and you've gotten out of practice, but because it's gilded and because it doesn't, it basically tells you that you've conquered it, you're just kind of stuck. And I know what you're thinking, that eggs crack, I forgot even the term, that when the eggs crack, um, it tells you to go back and review that lesson. But you have to realize that, I mean, at least I ignore those because only three lessons can be cracked at a time. So if you don't touch them, nothing else cracks. Um, if you make the effort to make sure that nothing cracks, I mean, I guess it's a little bit better, but I'm not really sure about the, you know, algorithm behind when those eggs crack and when Duolingo thinks that you need to refresh yourself on some of these concepts. It really gives you a false sense of accomplishment, thinking, wow, look at all these concepts I know and understand and I must be so great. And then what happens is you go to another resource or you go to a conversation and you go in feeling so confident and then you realize that you don't know nearly as much as you thought you did. When you're faced with that scenario, going into a scenario thinking you know so much and then all of a sudden you don't because you've never actually had a conversation or have 
or you've never actually interacted in the language, uh, stuck. Have you ever felt stuck by any of these features of Duolingo that, you know, they're meant to help you and they do help in some ways, but in other ways, they just, they just keep you stuck and they keep you trapped. Let me know in the comment section below, let's commiserate. So how do I avoid getting sucked into the Duolingo trap? How do we allow these features of Duolingo to be helpful um, in the way that theoretically they're meant to be and not something that really brings our language learning down? The first thing is to realize that Duolingo is a game. I mean, it's better for your language learning than like Candy Crush or something like that. But you do have to realize that it is a game. It is highly gamified, which means, you know, it is meant to be fun and enjoyable, entertaining, and meant to keep you coming back, which is great, but it's not everything. You know, it's meant to keep you coming back so that they make money. And well, you know, one of the things is so they can make money. But the other thing is they cannot teach you the language if you don't keep coming back. So whether or not you're learning anything, is honestly a secondary thing to them, which isn't inherently a bad thing. It just is, you know, it's, that's how language learning apps work, but especially Duolingo. Duolingo is very, very popular and very, very successful because it is very good at getting language learners to come back, whether or not they're coming back for the right reasons or for like positive reasons. That's a whole other topic. If you keep coming back, they've done their job. So make sure that you are not getting sucked into coming back, even if it's not actually helping you. Second thing is making sure that you're paying attention to the metrics that you're basing your success off of. So if you're basing your progress over your streak, how much XP you're earning every week, how much, you know, if you're in like the, if you're in the diamond league and you're trying to get that number one spot, if you're intently focused on getting more XP than everybody else, but just for the purpose of getting the achievement that you get when you're number one in the in the diamond league, if you focus in on that like once and then get it, I mean that's not too bad. But when you are when you find yourself obsessed with beating out everybody else in your league, and you end up just working on getting XP because that's what Duolingo is training you to do, basically, you can back off and think about what other metrics are more important to you. Or if you're like obsessed over hearts and not losing hearts. Um, time to step back a little bit because Duolingo hearts ain't everything. It can be helpful in that case to pay for Duolingo premium if that's something that is of interest to you. You can either pay for pro premium. You can go to desktop because on desktop there are no hearts, fun fact. Um, or you can just make sure that you're not putting that much energy into hearts and making sure that you're not getting yourself too excited about them. It's not a legitimate genuine metric of your abilities in the language, whether or not you have hearts. Because in real life, languages don't care how many hearts you have or how much XP you have in a language. Just in real life, nobody cares about that. That is just a Duolingo thing. Also, don't get hooked on your streak. I know that it's much easier said than done. I have been there. I totally understand it. But if all of your language learning exists just to keep your streak going and like that that feeling of obligation and that feeling of like dread of losing that number, I give you full permission to just let go of your streak and just let it go down to zero. Take a screenshot. If you want to take a screenshot of your streak so you have like evidence that you had that streak and you know, you achieved something, even if it's not entirely language training related. If you're trying to learn a language and you are depending on that streak to give you that sense of purpose, sense of accomplishment, sense of progress, then um, I really suggest you look for something else because in reality, it doesn't matter how many days in a row you practiced your language. You don't have to learn every single day, especially if you need to take a mental break. You don't need to work on it every single day. You just don't. And then finally, make sure that you don't get stuck in the Duolingo trap by being aware of what it is that you actually want to accomplish in your language learning. Um, it's really easy to get sucked into completing the tree and building the tree. It does give you like, you know, a visual path, which is like, it's definitely like something psychological going on where you can see a journey, whether or not it's like the journey that you want it to be. That's the other thing. Think about what you want from your language learning outside of the Duolingo tree, because when you're aware of what exactly you want from your language learning, 
it'll be so much easier to make good decisions, make logical decisions as to what you want to use, what you want to spend your time doing to achieve your language learning goals. Making sure that what you're doing actually applies to and is actually relevant to what you want to accomplish is like, it's, it's a big deal. And like I said, building a dual language tree is great, it's awesome, but in real life language learning, like outside of the Duolingo space, like, I mean, if you go to a language exchange, nobody's gonna ask you if you've gilded your Duolingo tree. It's just, it's, it's just, it's not a thing. If you wanna know exactly how to accomplish your language goals and how to know if what you're doing is the right thing to do, make sure you click the link below in the description box for my free training. Um, that'll be really, really helpful. That's what I'm best at. And if you're still liking Duolingo and you want to use it a little bit better, I have this video here where I talk about some hacks, extensions, things that you can, you know, add to your Duolingo strategy, routine list, whatever it is that you're doing. This video has a couple different things that you can use to make Duolingo a little bit more effective. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.